We're going to continue talking about the transform menu now, and this time I'm going to touch on the bend command, which is located here in my transform menu. Now bending does just what it says. Basically it's going to allow you to bend an object according to your specifications. The simplest way to demonstrate this is to find something that's going to bend pretty well. In this case I'll choose a pipe. Now to create a pipe, I first need a curve, control point curve. I'm just going to create a vaguely bent line here. Sort of a blade of grass type look. I'll select my line, go to my solids menu, choose the pipe command, and now at the top here you can see I've got some choices and cap I'm going to change to no by clicking there. What this means is our pipe is going to be hollow. It's not going to be capped on the ends. I choose the diameter of each end. Now at this end I'm actually going to click right on the line itself. The other end I'll click about like that. And now we have a, a sort of simple blade of grass type shape. Hollow on one end, sort of a bent cone. Most shapes will work, but poly surface shapes cannot be bent. In other words, if I were to create a cube, or a rectangle in this case, select my rectangle, transform, bend, As you can see the message here cannot bend poly surfaces. And again, a poly surface is just many surfaces glued together, as in the case of my rectangle. So I'll delete that. Now when I clicked my object here, this little menu popped up. It wants to know do I want to select the curve inside or the surface on the outside or none. I'm going to pick curve inside, then I'm going to press my delete key so that we just have our one shape here to deal with. Let's hop back up to transform and bend. Start of spine. Now this is how the bending spine is going to work. I click one end, I click the other. Now this can be anywhere. Depending on where I put the second point, the bend will have wildly different effects. So let's try going straight up, forming a straight line to about here. Point to bend through. Now at this point I'm not holding down any mouse buttons. I can just roam around with the mouse and the shape will bend on its own. As you can see if I bend it too far it sort of twists in on itself. Also, as you can see, when I go this way, it seems to shrink, and when I go this way, it seems to get larger. So let's bend it there. We'll left-click to confirm. So there's our shape after a little bending. I'm going to press Control-Z to undo. Transform. Bend. I'm going to pick the same point, our base point here. Now this time, what if I pick a point out here for the end of my spine. Let's see what's going to happen. Well, as you can see, it seems to be bending slower. Also expanding as, a, as long as I stay on this side. The closer I move my mouse cursor to my origin point, the more it tries to bend. So let's move it down to here. Left click. Now it looks pretty bizarre. Let's take a look at what we have. As you can see, I've bent it so hard that it's kind of caved in on itself a little bit. We'll press Control-Z again. Now if I had bent it in the opposite direction, it sort of becomes squashed. So bend is a fun tool to experiment with. Depending on the shape that you're using, you can have some wildly different effects. In general, when you use the bend tool, what Rhino is doing is thinking of a circle. As you can see by my guideline here that I'm drawing with my mouse, it's trying to bend the object in a more or less circular shape. One mistake to avoid transform and bend is this. Now what if I pick my end of spine 
in the point that we've used so far. Then I don't go all the way up past the tip of my shape. I stop, we'll say, right here. Now, what's going to happen now? Well, what Rhino is going to do is only bend the object within the range of the spine that I've just selected. Now, this can have some neat effects sometimes, but most of the time what you'll end up doing is leaving pieces behind and creating kind of an unusual and often incorrect looking shape. As you can see, now I'm sort of stretching it in the middle. Because the tip here remains in the same place. I'll undo that. If you want to bend your entire object, again, the spine needs to encompass the entire length of the object. I make it a little bit longer just to be safe, and then I can bend my whole object. Good.